What's going on guys, John Alder here from CodeMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at density plots with matplotlib, pandas, and python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at density plots, but before we get started, if you like this video and wanna see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodeMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at density plots or kernel density plots. Actually, both kernel density plots and density plots are basically the same thing. And this is sort of what it looks like. So let's head over here. I've got a Jupyter notebook called kernel, and we've got our starter code that we've been using for a while now. We're just importing pandas and numpy. We've got this random number generator. We've got this little matplotlib inline tag that lets us put charts and graphs in our Jupyter notebook easily. And then I'm just generating 500 random points and putting them in a data frame with headings of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So if we run this, we see, there we go. So let's go down here and let's create a density plot. So as always, we call my underscore DF, which is the name of our data frame and then dot plot. And then we want to set the kind equal to now, like I said, we're going to look at density plots and kernel density plots. And so a kernel density plot is just a KDE. It's basically the same as a density plot, but I'll just do this one first. Now, if we shift enter to run this, we're going to get an error because we actually need another library to do this. We need SciPy. So yeah, see right here, no model named SciPy. So we can come back to our terminal. Control C to break out of here. And I'm in my C, my data directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on and we can just pip install scipy. And this takes a minute or so to download and install. No big deal. And there we go. So now we can run our Jupyter notebook again, Jupyter notebook command. Come back over here. Let's hit up our browser here and let's restart. And I'm going to shift enter to run this tab again to run this cell again, and then come down here and shift enter to run this guy. And now, boom, we get this kernel density plot. Very cool. Now, if you're interested in what SciPy is, uh, you can head over to Google, type in SciPy. SciPy is a free open source Python library used for scientific computing. Use this a lot in data analysis and uh, machine learning and things like that. And you can, if you keep reading here, it says it contains modules for optimization, linear algebra, integration, interpolation, special functions, all that good stuff. And uh, we might get into this in more detail later on, but very cool little library and you're gonna use this a lot, but uh, we don't really need to know what it is right now for this video. We just need to know that we need it. So we can go ahead and close this and here we go. So like everything, you could do these in two different ways. So again, we can go my underscore DF dot plot dot KDE and just run it like that. And we get the exact same thing. But when you do it this way, you can shift tab to read about this thing. And if you want to know exactly what these are, if you're not familiar, we can see in statistics, a kernel density estimation is a non-parametric way to estimate the probability density function, PDF of random variable. Uh, this function is used in Gaussian kernels, including automatic bandwidth determination. So you can read more about this at Wikipedia if you're interested, but for now, we're just going to push on through. So that's the KDE. And so, like I said, in this video, we're going to also look at density plots. So again, we can my underscore DF dot plot. And we could set the kind equal to density, or we could just go dot density. There we go. Shift enter to run this. And you can see it's the exact same chart. In fact, if we shift tab and look at the documentation for this, it's the exact same documentation, right? It's a non-parametric way to estimate the probability density function, PDF of a random variable. So, you know, either way, it really doesn't matter which one of these you use. And like I said, we could do the other method with this one too. So minus score df dot plot and then set the kind equal to density. You know, either way, whichever you prefer. Now we could play around with this thing here. Uh, let me grab this and move it down. Let's change stuff, <laughs> right? So let me come up here and let's just grab, um, let's do the KDE one. Why not? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And we can set the alpha for this. So, you know, these are all stacked on top of each other. If we want to make them a little more transparent, so maybe we can see better, you could do that. You could also change the width. So LW, we could change this to I don't know, like a four. So the width is thicker. We could change it to 10 if we get really crazy. Again, that's kind of hard to read, but you know, play around with this. However, works well with your specific data. And again, we could always just sort of, you know, just do one of these, right? So if you just want Monday or Tuesday, right? whatever. Uh, you could always do that too. And like all the other charts and graphs we've looked at so far, we can do things like, you know, add grid lines. 
if we want. So that's definitely useful here. We could also, as always, create a title, you know. So my awesome KDE lot. <laughs> All right, we get a little title and uh, very cool. So those are density plots or kernel density estimation plots. Very useful, especially if you're a statistics geek and you need to know this information and very easy to use. So that's all for this video. If you like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students to learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.